And you know what time it is? It's time for KP's video news. <laughs> That's right, KP's Video News. KP's Video News, y'all. Cheers. Water cheers. Uh, yeah, and, and so what we have here is uh, try to get get back on track with some of my other stories that I've been missing out on here. And we have a uh, story about black fatigue. And it's black fatigue is how racism erodes the uh, the mind and erodes the body and the spirit. And it's a book by Mary Mary Frances Winters. And uh, the Black Lives Matter movement is an international symbol of racial solidarity in the face of countless atrocities against people of color across the planet. Its progress is not just a result of political and corporate reactions to outrage fueled by the recent murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and so many others, but with uh, the black community struggles for equality since the Middle Passage. Mary Frances Winters, author and CEO of the Winners Group, is here to make it clear that black people are exhausted from a long history of blatant racism. A long history of blatant racism. We've been involved in uh, the victims of this racism, and uh, the, the name of the book is is called Black Fatigue: How Racism Erodes the Mind, Body, and Spirit. And uh, so it goes on sale on September September fifteenth. Goes on sale this Tuesday, I believe. Is that Tuesday? Check my calendar here. I believe that's Tuesday. Uh, yeah, it goes on sale this Tuesday, and uh, wherever books are sold, and it's a beautifully written uh, book on the effects of racism on black people's psyche, drawing from her own experiences as a first-generation African-American born of African-Canadian parents, her endurance of racism in education and in corporate America and deeply researched facts and statistics, Black Fatigue examines the collective phenomenon of having had enough of the gut punch of continued international racism. Black fatigue empirically proves that black children often grow up too fast because of their socioeconomic uh, circumstances and stereotypes that they are less innocent than white children. The mass incarceration of black men greatly contributes to the striking statistics on how few uh, of them marry and the most striking of their findings is the startling connection between black people and their psychological and physical health challenges as a result of enduring racism. The racist system is not just killing black people, it is tearing the whole nation apart in every aspect of life, from socioeconomics to education to the workforce, criminal justice, and very important, the uh, health outcomes. Black fatigue is not only timely, but is a necessary, necessary addition to the 21st century uh, canon of critical writings on race and culture. Winner's nine chapter exploration of the subject is not only proof of racial disparity, but a step-by-step -step guide designed to educate the reader on the overlooked and often forgotten history of discrimination and discontentment and what we can do about it. It is a timeless chronicle of both a black woman's path on a narrow road of white male privilege and the ancestral burden of being from a family that escaped uh, Amer uh, the American South for Canada via the Underground Railroad. Winner's story is unique, captivating, and uh, right on time in both enlightening and continuing the world uh, world on fire. And uh, that's, the book is called Black Fatigue. And, uh, you know... It's a real, you know, I want to try to get this particular book and the key talking points. Uh, Winners is a, a leader in the DEI space. The Winners Group partners with many Fortune 500 companies and organizations of various sizes that are seeking to create more inclusive 
and equitable environments uh, where uh, the recent corporate MEA uh, couples and rallies for equality just a, a moment and not a movement it was uh, is what is said publicly the same as what is happening privately in corporate culture today is racism still too uncomfortable of a subject black fatigue as a state of being overshadows the progress both legal and social spheres because incidents of systematic racism continue to evolve just as quickly as intended corrections are made. There is nothing more powerless as a black parent than to be able to elevate your family's social economic status and be discriminated against by the community in which you live. For black people being middle class and from a two-parent family does not protect you from systematic racism. Racism has adverse effects on the literal health of black people. Recently, Michelle Obama spoke of her low-grade dis uh, depression because of the pandemic and racial injustice in the United States. Uh, the compounding fatigue of multiple uh, stigmatic identities, black, gay, disabled, for example, well-meaning white people literally do not know what to do in confronting racism. And millennials and Generation Z continue to suffer under the hand of systematic oppression. Uh, we have not reached a post-racial America as some asserted with the election of black, uh, Barack Obama as, uh, as president. So they thought that just because black Barack Obama was, was president, that racism was over. And that's the way white people looked at it. But the way, uh, but black people don't look at it that way because black people are still suffering and still catching hell out there at work, in, uh, at, you know, in the stores, in the streets, wherever they go. So, you know, going from that, going to the next step here. And this is, uh, one person that did, you know, get a chance to, uh, do something, uh, on a, a bigger scale It's a black woman astronaut will be the first to visit the international space station. And you have Jeanette Epps, a NASA astronaut will soon make history as the first ever black woman to fly to the international space station on a mission into orbit. It will also be her first space flight in her career. Epps was from Syracuse, New York, earned a bachelor's degree in physics in 1992. From Des Moines College, she then attended the University of Mer Maryland College Park, where she re received a master's in 1994 and a doctorate in 2000 in aerospace engineering. She was also a NASA graduate student researchers project uh, fellow while pursuing her doctorate degree, where she authored several journals and conference articles on her research. After finishing her graduate school, she worked as a technical uh, specialist in Ford Scientific Research Laboratory for two years, co-authoring several patents. Uh, patents, excuse me, patents. So she got co-authoring several patents. She then served as a technical intelligence officer in the CIA for seven years. And in 2009, she was one of nine selected people to become a NASA astronaut. Moreover, she would have made history in earlier two, uh, 2018 as the first black woman to live on the International Space Station, but was later reassigned for undisclosed reason. Now, Epps has been assigned to NASA's Boeing Starliner 1 mission, the first operational crewed flight of the Boeing C CST-100 Starliner spacecraft on a mission to the International Space Station, and which she would be joining NASA astronauts uh, Sunita Williams and Josh Casada for a six month expedition which is set to launch in 2021. So that goes next year. And uh, that's, that's gonna happen next year. And this is a report, terrible, terrible situation, man. We got a downright criminal, a criminal report that a racist Trump stooge tried to censor the CDC to report. So that's, that's the Center for Disease disease and uh, control reports he, he's trying to censor the reports so trump lackey michael caputo reportedly tried to retroactively change agency reports on the dangers posed by COVID. and uh so days after after trump admitted to a, a knowingly downplaying playing the COVID 19 pandemic in his statements to the public new reporting late friday revealed that Trump political aides have been reviewing and in some cases altering 
weekly CDC reports about the deadly virus in an effort to bring them closer and to closer alignment with what the president's false narratives and claims. And uh, a Republican strategist, Michael Caputo, a Republican strategist with no medical expertise, have attempted to add caveats to the CDC's findings, including an effort to retroactively change agency reports that they said wrongly inflated the risk of COVID-19 and should have made clear that Americans sickened by the virus may have been infected because of their own behavior. The primary target of the Trump officials' interference has been the CDC's morbidity and mortality weekly reports, a crucial research resource for experts, uh, uh, public officials, and members of the public seeking to track the spread of COVID-19, while CDC officials have pushed back on meddling from uh, political appointees, uh, it is reported that the agency has increasingly agreed to allow the po uh, political officials to review the reports and in few cases compromise on the, on the wording. And uh, according to one internal email obtained, Caputo and aide Paul Alexander accused the CDC, an agency directed by Trump appointee Robert Redfield, of writing hit pieces on the administration and attempting to use this weekly reports to hurt the president. So they trying to switch it up. So, uh, wow, man, the CDC tried to report as if uh, once kids get together, there will be a spread that uh, and this will Im uh, impact school reopening. And that's what Alexander wrote an assistant professor of, of health research at McMaster University in Toronto, very misleading by the CDC. And, and so they're trying to throw the CDC under the bus by, by telling the truth. The CDC wants to tell the truth, but you have, uh, uh, you have Caputo and Paul Alexander are trying to twist everything up and try to make it fit some of the lies that Trump was telling. So, so it says, you know, the reports must be read by someone outside of the CDC, like myself, and this is what Alexander's demanding, demanding to Redfield that he allowed the HS, HHS aide to personally edit the CDC's reports. Wow. And uh, we cannot allow the reporting to go on as it has been, for it is outrageous and lunacy. Alexander, who had been also attempted to alter the public messaging of Dr. Fauci wrote Redfield, nothing to go out unless I read and agree with the findings how the, how the CDC wrote it and I tweak it to ensure it's fair and balanced and complete. Wow, these guys, man. Oh, man, putting our lives on the line. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you the, uh, uh, the villains, man. These are the villains. And so Caputo, a stooge, a Trump stooge with a history of racist statements and no medical background, is doctoring CDC reports warning Americans on COVID because they make Trump look bad. Wow. Wow, man. This is, uh, and so, I mean, the people at the CDC say this, you know, by having them, uh, you know, so I mean, if they if they're muzzling all the all the reports and they're changing all the reports, what good are they? What good are even pass, giving out the reports? They just, I mean, this this is this corruption, man, has got to stop. And it's time for new management. It's time for new. It's time, man. It's just time for new uh, new people. We need new people in the White House. We need new people, man. We need new people in, in charge of these. All get rid of all of these crooks. They have all got to go because the stuff that they're doing is putting all our lives on the line. And uh, here we got another. This is the report here about federal. The federal appeals court blocks Florida's felons from voting until fees and fines are paid. And this just 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 happened. This just happened because a federal appeals court dominated by President Trump's nominees ruled Friday that hundreds of thousands of Florida felons who have completed their sentences cannot vote this fall or in the future unless they pay fees 
and fines owed to the state. In a decision from the U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit, along strict ideological lines could have a major impact on the presidential race because of Florida's history of razor-thin margins. In 2000, George Bush won the uh, White House by a 537-vote victory margin in Florida. The appeals court ruling was written by Chief Judge William Pryor, who was named to the court by uh, George Bush and is on Trump's list of potential Supreme Court nominees. The other five judges in the 6-4 majority were appointed by Trump. All four judges in the minority were named by Democratic presidents. So six, six of the Trump appointees voted to get rid of, get to uh, block them from voting. Uh, so the legal battle stemmed from a constitutional amendment passed by the Florida voters in 2018 that allows most felons to vote after their sentences are complete. Those convicted of a murder or a felony sexual offense are not included. They'll never be able to vote. In response, the Republican-controlled Senate uh, and state legislature passed by Governor DeSantis signed a law requiring that felons first pay all of their financial obligations. So you got to pay the vote. It's a poll tax, man. Because the courts and fees are legitimate parts of criminal sentence that that is part of the debt to society that felons must pay for their crimes. There is no basis to regard them as a tax. The appeals court rule. That's all it is. is a is a is a, pay, it's a voter's tax. There are about seven hundred and seventy-five thousand felons in the state who have completed their prison sentences, including parole or probation. So far, at least eighty-five thousand have registered to vote and will be screened for eligibility based on financial requirements. Unless the state finds information that disqualifies them, Pryor wrote, those felons are entitled to vote. In dissent, Judge Jordan and three colleagues said the ruling will obstruct, impede, and impair the ability of felons to vote because even those already registered risk committing the crime if they were later found to owe money as part of their sentence. Should any of those 85,000 registrants choose to vote in the upcoming election as they may believe in good faith they have the right to do, they risk criminal prosecution if they turn out to be wrong about their eligibility. Wow, man. Voting rights group had challenged the law as unconstitutional in May, and uh, uh, Judge Hinkle struck it down as a pay-to-vote system. He said most felons cannot afford to pay what they owe. If the state can even de uh, determine the amount, the appeals court temporarily blocked Hinkle's ruling while considering the case, which was heard in August, and a majority of the Supreme Court refused to intercede without comment, uh, with three liberal justices dissenting. Under this, under this scheme, nearly a million otherwise eligible citizens cannot vote unless they pay money. So, uh, Associate uh, so, uh, Justice Sotomayor said, calling it a voter paywall. Most states restore felons' rights after their sentences are complete. Many states impose additional requirements. Florida is among 11 states with the most restrictive rules, according to the National Conference of Legislatures. Wow. So now, now it was on the ballot. The people voted on it. The people voted on it. It got approved. So now you got some Trump-appointed judges that have just taken their right away from them and to uh, vote unless they pay their fines and who knows how much those fines are and you know so it's like some of these people would never be able to vote if they if they had a, a thirty thousand dollar fine or something they got to pay and they just they just getting out of prison they don't have the thirty thousand dollars so basically they just charging them charging them to vote they need to kick this up to the supreme court in, in washington dc they need to uh, uh, fight this. They need to fight this situation because, you know, voter suppression. It's more voter suppression, folks. You know, and the only way to fight that is all the people that are legal to vote. Get out there and vote. You have to get out there and vote and vote as soon as you possibly can. Do not wait. Don't wait. Right. Keep peace. Vote early.
early. The earlier you vote, the better. It's time for what? Take these videos, y'all. Peace.